Greetings, printing enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is Tegaw 3D. Today's episode, I'm going to call Transparent Tax Day. Here in the U.S., today is tax day, and my taxes were a little more complicated this year because back in September, I started making a little 3D printing business. So as I was going through and gathering up receipts and making spreadsheets, I thought this might make a good video. Uh, I see the question come up quite a bit where people are asking, I have a 3D printer, how do I make money with it? And so I know that that's a hot topic. So quick disclaimer, first off, I didn't really seriously start selling things until the end of September. So this is about three months of data that we have here. And secondly, as the video progresses, you'll see that I'm still pretty solidly in the red. It was a big investment year. I spent money on a lot of things. It may not be things that you spend money on, but it's things that I spent money on. Let's start with the good news is, the good news is from September to December of 2015, I actually made enough in sales to offset the cost of the Maker Gear M2. So yay! The biggest chunk of my sales came from craft shows, and actually it was a single show that was the biggest contributor to that number. I signed up for a larger craft show in my town, it was my very first time ever, ever, ever doing a craft show. Um, I was a newbie, but with my first show, I was able to make $700, which was seven times my booth fee. I consider that first show a big success, but I also felt like I needed to dial in my prices a little more. I know absolutely nothing about sales, but a year ago, I knew absolutely nothing about my 3D printer. And you experiment, and you learn, and you dial in your settings for the printer. And that's what I felt I needed to do with my sales prices. So what I did was sign up for a lot of smaller shows. Uh, they had really, really cheap booth fees. One show had a free booth fee. Uh, they definitely had less foot traffic, but it gave me the flexibility to experiment with lower prices so I can start to learn. Uh, Side benefit, I made some extra money. So at the end of the year, my craft shows, I came in at $1,049. The second biggest chunk of sales came from Etsy. I set up an Etsy site and actually with no promotion or I didn't even tell my girlfriends, I got my first sale within seven days. So it's actually been a lot less work than craft shows. My Etsy sales came out to about $300. To put that in perspective, the Wanhao Duplicator i3 is $399. I also have stuff on Shapeways. That's where I got my start because I was 3D modeling and 3D printing for a year before I had my own 3D printer. Shapeways has been phenomenally supportive of me. I've um, been retweeted by them, they've put me on their blog, they've sent me nice swag for maker fairs. With Shapeways, you know, you put your products up on there, they do the printing, uh, they can do over 50 materials and finishes including premium cast metals so you can make some really nice jewelry. Shapeways is not particularly a big money maker for me. I made $24.65 in 2015 from them. Um, but this is could be some of my doing. I don't do a lot of promotion of my products. In addition, I have it in my power to pick my markup. And I tend to set that pretty low. And I also tend to turn that off when I know a nonprofit organization, maybe a Relay for Life or a breastfeeding support group is wanting to buy my products. I turn that off to make it cheaper for them. I also did 3D hubs. Honestly, I wasn't sure how fulfilling I would find it to print other people's models and other people's projects. I have a very low sample size here. I only made $18.39 in 2015 through 3D Hums, um, but I have to say it's very fulfilling. And the reason is those people who are coming to you to print things, some of them, this is their first thing that they've 3D printed. And it's some of it, this is the first thing that they designed and they 3D printed, right? When you're doing something through 3D Hubs and you're doing that for somebody else, you get to be there and you get to see their face when their design comes to life. Direct sales. 
when you do those craft shows, invariably you are approached by people who have ideas of things that they want to print. And then of course your friends and family, as they see you printing things on Facebook, they're going to approach you as well. So with the 2015, the last three months in 2015, the um, direct sales that I had came out to $180. Finally, what I've been finding most fulfilling is training and empowering other people to make their own designs and their own prints. I started out doing some training sessions and you know I do those for free for special events and then in December all of a sudden I just started getting some token payments for that. I have some paying training sessions that are booked for 2016 so I'm excited that that number will probably go up. Okay guys. Now the, the bad stuff. First off, the Maker Gear M2. It was about $1,700 pre-assembled. Secondly, I bought a laptop um, to do my modeling on and also is more compatible with the Kinect that we're using for 3D scanning and I run it for Simplify 3D. You don't necessarily have to purchase a laptop, but I did. The next big expenditure has to do with the craft shows. You may not be doing craft shows, so you may not have to spend money on this. But I was doing craft shows, so I needed a 10 by 10 tent. I needed tables. I needed things to put things on. I needed tablecloths. I was doing a two day event, so I needed walls to close up my booth at the night. So that was some expenditures. Oh, I got a banner, I got business cards, definitely, definitely get business cards. I've given away more business cards for my 3D printing stuff than I have my entire career of being a software developer. And I've been a software developer for, I don't know, 15 years, so definitely get business cards. I spent some money on consumables, and by consumables I'm thinking my painter's tape for my bed, I'm thinking glue sticks. I'm thinking the sandpaper, I'm thinking the steel wool that I use for bronze fill, those kinds of things. And I spent about $300 on craft supplies. I am taking a very crafty direction with my 3D printing, so this expenditures may not apply to you. Um, but, you know, I'm not just selling 3D prints, I'm making them into threes, I'm making them into keychains, I'm making them into bottle stoppers. The bottle stoppers were probably the biggest chunk of this $300. Filament, filament. <laughs> 2016, I am not going to be spending as much on filament. One, I have a nice little stockpile over to my left. And two, I won a contest, so I have some free filament coming my way. But in 2015, I did spend a lot on filament, and I may have a little bit of a filament addiction. So I spent about $500. Um, most of this was color fab, which I love, and my bronze fill and my glow fill, so love, love, love. This one may not apply to you, and it's certainly not going to apply to me for many years to come. Uh, I've owned the TGAW domain name since the mid-90s, and it was up for renewal. So I went ahead and renewed it for seven years and renewed my web hosting. And then I also had a graphic designer friend who you know, needed some extra money for some veterinary bills. So I also got a logo designed. So that, um, that kind of expenditures all came out to $880. And this won't apply to 2016. And it probably won't apply for five, six, five to seven years. I did have to pay craft show fees. Those came out to less than $200, something like $180. My Etsy listing fees came out to $2.80. Uh, licenses, I did have to buy a business license in my town. It was very reasonable. It was only $30. Software, if you've watched some of my other videos, you know that I'm a huge fan of Simplify 3D. It was $149. It was well worth $149. Printer parts. I did have to purchase some additional parts for my printer after the warranty wore out, and that came out to $138.50, I think. So there you go. Yep, I spent $5,500 in 2015 for my 3D printing, 3D modeling business. A lot of it is not going to apply to 2016. I have a lot of exciting opportunities in 2016, so it'll be interesting to see if I happen to break even next year. 
Well, that's today's episode. I do hope some of this information is helpful or thought provoking to you. Um, yeah, very, very transparent episode. A lot of numbers. Um, I am very, very happy with how things are going so far and I look forward to 2016.